What is going on everybody, my name is Robert Watkin and welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to optimise Windows, make it a bit faster. This is kind of fitting along with the last, or one of the last videos where I showed how to clean up the C drive um, and that kind of boosted performance a little bit. So this is going to be more aimed directly at actually improving the performance, not necessarily making more room on your hard drives but just actually making your computer a bit faster. I feel like this will be especially helpful on older computers um, if you're starting to notice it is getting a bit slow and you do need that little extra boost then you can do this and it'll just improve it slightly. There will be no downloads required to do all the steps I'm going to show in this video so you don't have to worry about that just follow along. So the first thing we're going to do guys is we're going to check for an update this is just to make sure the software is going to be working correctly and all the steps we're going to carry out are doable on the version of Windows we're using. So if you just go into your search bar and type in update, you can do check for system updates, we'll click enter on that, let this load up and then we'll click here, check for updates. Now fortunately I am up to date, or at least I should be, so we'll find out here. Um, never mind, I am not up to date. <laughs> So once you've clicked on check for updates, it'll tell you if you have any updates available. In this case, I do have updates available, so we're going to go through with this step, update our PC, and then move on to the next step. We can see it is going to download here. It may take a bit of time, and once that's done, we'll be able to carry on to the next step. What? Okay, I'm a bit confused, because it said I needed an update, and then it said there was a fail, and now it says I'm up to date. I'm... I'm just going to take that I'm up to date now, um, I'm a bit confused there, hopefully that doesn't happen to you, just carry out an update if needed and all should go well. But we're going to close this down now and we'll move on to the next step. Now the next step we're going to control the power options of the PC, this will just make the power usage a bit more optimised and improve the performance there. So what you want to do guys is click on the Windows icon at the bottom here, click on to settings, you want to go into system over here, now I'm just going to make this window a little bit bigger, you then want to go into power and sleep additional power settings and then it'll launch this window here and you'll be able to see a few different power settings which we can choose from so by default it should be on balance which is the recommended type of power usage there's also a power saver which will save energy and reduce the performance of the computer where it's possible or if you click on the show additional plans here with this little drop down arrow you can then choose high performance and that'll favor high performance it may use slightly more energy but your computer will run a lot better now we're going to actually improve this a bit more by clicking on change plan settings here and then we're going to go to change advanced power settings. Now the first thing you're going to see here is turn off hard disk after we're going to set this to zero. We're going to type in zero here. We're then we're going to go into processor power management, minimum, pro minimum processor state and then set this to zero as well. Now we're going to go to maximum processor state and just make sure that is set to 100 here. We can then click apply and click OK. Now the next step we are going to close down this panel here, we are going to go back here and we are going to go into the privacy settings. So you can see the privacy icon here, we're going to click on that. And what we're going to do here guys, you'll see the general options straight away, we're just going to turn all of these off. Now some of these options will be, well optional, uh, you can decide if you want to have them on or not. Um, but certain things like the location services for example, if you don't use them, if it is turned on but you don't really have a need for them, then you might as well just turn that off because of course you don't need to be running that um, and of course that's going to use some of your performance where it's being used. So you can turn that off. The next thing we're going to do is go into the camera tab and then you can just turn everything off here. You can either go through and manually click all of them or you can just click here on the off button and that'll just disable camera use for everything. You will have to turn this back on if you want it but one, if you don't have a camera then it's pointless having it. Uh, two, if you have got a camera, but if you just don't use it, then there's no point having it on. You might as well turn it off. If you are going to have to use it in the future, though, just bear in mind you have changed the settings, so you will have to go back in here to turn it on at some point. Then you can also do the same thing for microphone here. You can go and click off. Um, what I'm going to do here is just manually go through some of the options as I do actually use my microphone, as you can probably tell, like right now I am using my microphone. So in some cases you may want to keep it on, um, but for everything else I don't really use it. I don't use voice recorder, I use Audacity. Um, so all the options that are on this screen here, I can just disable them except for Skype. I'll want to keep Skype on there. You then want to go into your contacts tab and then if you don't use any of these contact services um, then you can just remove them. Personally I don't use any of them for the device myself when I want to use some sort of service like mail, messaging, maps, anything like that. I'll log into a different service through a browser. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to turn that off. We're then going to do the same thing with calendar. Like I said same principles as before. If you don't use it then you can get rid of it. 
Um, so I'm just going to turn that off here as well, turn that off at the top. And then we're going to go into call history, do the same here. So we'll just turn this off. Um, once again, if you don't have anything linked, if you don't have calls linked to it, then there's no point having that. We're going to go into emails here and do the same thing here. Um, like I said, a lot of the services I use, I use on a browser. Um, so whereas I still do need access my mail quite a lot. I don't need to access it through Windows itself. I access that through a browser so I can turn it off here. We're then going to go into radios. Disable let apps control radios. You then want to go into diagnostics and feedback. And this should already be set to basic, but if it is set to full, just change that to basic here, um, as that will be using a bit of performance. Now I want to go into background apps here. This is one you may have to look at to see if there is any apps you use which are important. If not, you can just go ahead and disable a lot of these. Um, personally, I don't really use any of these. I'll use the calculator at times. Um, don't even have Candy Crush, or at least I didn't know I did, so I'm going to remove that. And then just everything else I don't need. I will need my printer. Now the next step we are going to go into the system settings, so we're going to click back in the top corner here, go into system here which is the first button. You then want to go into the notifications and actions tab, disable show notifications on lock screen unless you use it of course if you want to keep that on you can. You also want to untick hide notifications when I'm duplicating my screen. Now I don't have any apps which actually send me notifications on my PC, if you do have them down here you can go through manually and choose which apps you want to send notifications to your PC and which ones you don't. I don't have any so I'm just going to skip out this bit but if you did have that it would just be the same as previous screens where you press the little slidey box. Now we're going to go back here and we are going to go into the gaming settings. Now on game bar here we're going to turn this off straight away and um, this is basically so as you can see here yeah, we can record clips, take screenshots and broadcast using game bar. Um, if you're not going to use this, if you've got no need for this then turn this off, this can improve your gaming performance a little bit. You then want to go into game DVR here at the side and if recording the background while playing a game is on you want to turn that off because of course this is using some performance. This is using the processing power to record your screen without you necessarily needing to do that and some of you may not even know that's doing that so if you have got that enabled you can disable that um, or if you do want to keep it on you can adjust the length to maybe something like 30 minutes the performance will still be dropped about the same but it's not going to take as much storage on your computer um, even though it's only temporary uh, I would just recommend turning this off if you've got no reason for it though now scroll down a bit here when you get to the bottom you want to disable capture mouse cursor in recordings and then go into the broadcasting tab at the side. Now you can disable record audio when I broadcast and then you can disable the capture mouse cursor in broadcasts here at the bottom. You can then go into true play here at the side, make sure this is turned off if it is on like this, just flip that switch and turn it off. And once you've done that, that is all you need to do for the Windows settings tab. You can close this down here and we'll go on to the next step. So the next step is defragmenting and optimizing drives. I'm just going to go over this briefly here. If you do want to look into this a bit more, I did cover this in my other video where I showed how to clean the C drive. I'll leave a link to that on screen and in the description. But we're going to go through this quickly. We're going to go into the defragment and optimize drives here by typing in defrag um, and then clicking on this here. And now you want to go through any drives you have and just optimize them. This is a really quick process, so even if you have got multiple drives, it should only take a couple minutes, unless it's been a long time since you have done this to the drives. So we're just going to give these drives a minute to optimize here. Once we've done that, we'll close it down and we can move on to the next step. And there we go, the defragmentation has been accomplished. Now, I would recommend when you are doing this, make sure you don't have any applications open. Just close everything down while you do this step, just to make it a bit easier on your computer, uh, make sure things don't go as wrong. And just by having stuff shut down while you're doing this is just going to ensure nothing gets like corrupted, nothing goes wrong with it. I've never had anything go wrong anyway when I've had other applications open, but better safe than sorry. So defragment in the drives is just one thing you can do to improve computer performance um, related to the actual computer drives themselves or the hard drives. So I'm going to leave that link, like I said, where you can go through that and see the other steps to help improve performance and clean up your C drive a bit. All the stuff in that video will be relevant, will improve performance and just save a little bit of space on your computer. So if you do want that little extra boost, go over that video and check out the steps I've got on there. It'll also save you a bit of space on your hard drives. 
So the next step, we're going to disable any startup programs we don't want running on our computer. Um, essentially, startup programs are any programs which launch when your computer starts up, so when you first turn it on. Of course, the more programs you have in this option, the, the more programs you have on startup, the longer it's going to take to actually be able to use your computer because it's trying to load a lot of things as soon as it's turned on. So to start doing this, you're going to click on the search icon at the bottom here. You're going to type in startup. And you'll see, see which processes start up automatically when you start. If you click on that, you will get all of these applications here. You can see at the side, it'll tell you which one is enabled, which isn't enabled. Um, and also, it'll say the impact. So we can see that Steam here has got a high impact, meaning it uses possibly a lot of RAM, a lot of processing power upon startup. So if we were to disable that, we could get onto our computer a bit quicker. So I'm going to go through here and just disable stuff I don't need. I'm going to keep on the stuff which are not measured or they are low um, and some things I have manually added to this such as the rebind uh, which is basically just the keyboard rebinder so every time I start my computer up it just rebinds my keyboard to make sure my keyboard is how I want it. So just remember if there is anything you do want kept enabled then obviously don't remove it from this list but I'm going to start at the bottom here and I'm going to start with update so this is a github service I don't need that. We're going to click on Spotify here, click on Disable, of course this is a high impact one so we won't rid of that one. Discord, Disable, we're just going to go through and disable pretty much all of them. So the only things I've kept enabled here are my Avast Launcher, so this is my antivirus here. I've also kept Google Chrome enabled, one because that is just a low impact and I tend to use Google Chrome most of the time as soon as I get on my computer. I've, in I've left my Rebind enabled, this is just a file which rebinds my keyboard keys. And I've enabled the Windows Defender notifications just to make sure my computer is a bit protected. And remember, if there is anything you would like to open as soon as you get on your computer, you can still open them. For example, if I loaded up and Spotify wasn't open, but I wanted to open it, I could still just search for it down at the bottom and load it up like so. Um, this is just going to improve the performance upon your startup. It's not necessarily going to remove the apps or get rid of them. You're still going to have them and you're still going to be able to use them. Right, so that is going to be it for this video, guys. Um, of course, there is many other things you could do to improve your performance on Windows. Like I said, I would recommend going checking out my video on how to clean your C drive. Is That is going to offer a lot more improvements as well along with this video. If you pair the two together, it's going to help your computer quite a lot and just keep it up to date, keep your computer healthy, keep it good. Um, but yeah, like I said, that is it. So if you did enjoy the video, guys, please leave a like down below. It is much appreciated. If you would like to see any tutorials, just recommend them down in the comments below and I'll happily do them. But that is going to be it for this video. So I'll see you in the next ever. Uh, 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 <laughs> so I'll see you in the next video of whatever I make, guys. Bye bye.